So I will present you the, the cube monitor. So it's the first hands-on for today. And uh, we will see in this hands-on uh, what is uh, the cube monitor, what it does and how you can uh, use it and how you can customize it uh, to monitor your application. We will also start the, the dashboard that you will use in next hands-ons. So what is uh, the cube monitor? It's a tool that comes at the end of the development uh, thread. So after you have uh, debugged your application with the, the ID and programmed on the board and you uh, need to uh, fine tune the application, the behavior of your application, the performance without disturbing the application. So you can use the monitor for this. Another important point is that this tool, like uh, the other tools of the ecosystem, is free. You, you can download it for free. And uh, like CubeID is based on an open platform. In the case of CubeID, uh, it's Eclipse. Here, uh, the Cube Monitor is based on Node Red. And uh, ST has added some feature to make it uh, suitable for the STM32 uh, MCUs, especially for the communication with the MCU. So this tool will be used when the application is running and it will allow you to customize the variables you want to monitor. So to display only the variable you want to see, uh, the data you want to see, and the way you will uh, display them uh, using uh, different widgets for this. So you will customize the dashboard of uh, displayed. And for this, uh, the, the tool uses uh, visual programming to make the work easier. The communication of the tool, uh, on the right side of this slide, uh, you see this picture and you certainly recognize it. You have your PC, the USB cable, the ST-Link probe, then the G-Tag here on the discovery board, uh, the, the probe is embedded on the board. Then you have the G-Tag and the SWD protocol connection to the MCU and uh, the tool will access to the MCU memory uh, through the MCU debug block. So like with the ID, all the MCU address space is accessible with these two. Even registers which have addresses will be uh, accessible. Uh, so any kind of memory, the flash or kind of RAM in the, in the MCU and registers, and the core registers or the peripheral registers. Uh, now you can uh, connect the board to your PC if it's not already done and launch uh, the Q monitor. And we will start from the homework. So during the homework, you have uh, downloaded a firmware to the board and you should have the green LED blinking on the board. And you have already connected the Q monitor to the board. So we are in the design mode here of the monitor and the floor, uh, which we which is um, displayed has uh, always the same structure, uh, whatever the, uh, because we want to communicate with the MCU from the PC to the MCU and uh, read uh, via, uh, data in the memory of the MCU. So uh, the floor is uh, defined into uh, parts. At the top, we have the uh, transmission path uh, from the PC to the MCU or to the st probe. And at the bottom, we have the path from the st probe uh, to the PC. So I come back to the slides. So each time on the transmission path, we will uh, click on the start button. We will send uh, messages to the st probe sequentially, asking to read uh, the value of the variables defined in the variable node and on the other direction uh, we will receive the variables from the st link and display it on a chart another uh, information to have in mind is that of course the mcu and the mcu debug block uses addresses and the PC software use names instead, and uh, we human beings prefer names as well. So the viable nodes, uh, both viable nodes here, will make the translation from names 
to addresses and from addresses to names. So those two nodes will have all the information about the variables. And the last point is that from this flow, we will get the directly the dashboard. So we can, I can show you this on the tool, clicking on dashboard. So you should have done this in homework already. We get this dashboard and on the dashboard, we find uh, the widget we have in the cube monitor. So the start and stop uh, button, the clear graph button, and all the rest is uh, the chart widget. But for the moment, if I click on the start button, of course, nothing happens. We must import the viable information in the tool. Uh, this is an extract of the firmware running at the moment on the board. So we have a variable and we will monitor this variable. I will show you how to monitor this variable. So we have the name, the type of this variable and an extract of the code with a, a simple while loop. And we see that we, we increment this variable by one every 500 milliseconds. And in between we have a line which is um, the the toggling of the of the lead so the lead is off for 500 milliseconds and on, on for, for 500, 500 milliseconds, milliseconds so the, so the, the period, period is, is uh, uh, one, one second. second and the the information about variable will be extracted from the elf file so the elf file is uh, has been generated during uh, the the build of the project with cube id and in this file we will find the address the name and the type of the variables. And I indicate at the bottom of this slide uh, two other uh, file extensions that are also supported by the tool, meaning that uh, other ID than cube ID can, can be used. So if I come back to the tool, to the cube monitor. So I've told you that um, the information will be in these uh, nodes, these two nodes. So the processing node will inherit uh, the list of variables that we will define in the in the list of variables at the top. So we can double click on the variable node. The property window appears. And we need to define this to to put the name of the exec executable in the in this executable. Um, a box here. So if I click on the arrow, I don't have any executable for the moment. I click on the small pen and I get another window. Here I must put a name. It's mandatory. So I will call it uh, my var config, uh, for example. We can have several config for the same uh, flow, for the same dashboard, for example, we can have several versions of the executable uh, of the executable file. Yeah, several versions of the firmware. Uh, but here we will just have one configuration. Here, the folder uh, we can't uh, browse uh, through the Window Explorer, so I will go directly in the Window Explorer to get the the path where the help file uh, is. So it's in the C column STM32H7 echo uh, workshop or WS and in the uh, in the Anzan uh, subdirectory Anzan 01. So I hope you have all um, installed the material in this default uh, directory. It will be um, easier for the rest of, of the Anzans. And I've put the ELF file in this um, in this uh, directory. So I just copy paste the directory in uh, in the folder uh, box. Then if I click on the arrow, I find my elf file. I click on it and I get the list of the variables in uh, my firmware. So here we are interested by the basic counter. So I click on it, I select it, and, and we see that we have the name, the address, and the type of the variable. 
So we're very happy with this. So I click on add and I have my variable in the variable list. And we see that we will um, sequentially acquire this, uh, this variable. So here we can uh, choose the frequency of acquisition, but we are very happy with this sequential loop, meaning it's the fastest possible acquisition in the cube monitor. We, we could choose another uh, frequency, but the maximum here is uh, one kilohertz for the acquisition. So now I can click on the done, and I see I have a blue uh, circle on my variable, meaning that I've modified uh, this uh, node. So I click on deploy to um, to save the modification and I can click on the dashboard. And now on the dashboard, when I click on start acquisition, I see that I have uh, the basic counter indicated at the bottom of the chart and that I the, the, the variable is read sequentially and that it's uh, sequentially uh, incremented. So if I stop the acquisition, I can uh, click on show point and I get a, a marker. If I zoom on the curve, I can see uh, that uh, the basic counter is in incremented by one every uh, 500 milliseconds. So now we are able to read some variable uh, from the MCU memory. We may want to modify this, uh, this value, but for the moment on our dashboard, we don't have anything to do this. So we must add some widget to be able to write uh, to the to write uh, the value of the basic counter and modify it in the MCU memory. So for this, we come back to the flow editor and we will use the right uh, panel widget on the, on the left, on the left of the screen. So to add it in the dashboard, in fact, it's very simple. We just click on it, keep the, the button of the mouse and drag it on the floor and we uh, just uh, release the button on, on, of the mouse. Then we have a red triangle here. If I put the mouse on it, I see that there is some invalid property, some group property that, that is invalid. If I double click on the right panel, I get the properties. In fact, we have a default value, which is uh, exactly, which is uh, good for us. Uh, if I click on the small pen, I see that the name of the group is, is chart and the, the tab is home. In fact, we can have several groups of widgets on the dashboard. Here we will just have one and we can have several tabs and uh, you will see an example of this a bit later. But for the moment, I just click on cancel, done, and the red uh, triangle has disappeared. So again, the uh, blue circle, so I click on deploy, and again on dashboard. And now I see uh, at the bottom of my dashboard that I have this right panel below the chart. So we have just by a, a simple drag and drop added a, a widget to the dashboard. So you see that it can be very easy to, to add some widget to, to the dashboard and to customize the, the dashboard. For the moment, we don't have anything in the in the right panel. So if I click on right, of course, if I click on the start acquisition, I see always my basic counter. But if I click on the right button, I nothing happens, of course. So we must populate this uh, right panel with um, variables, and especially with the basic counter, we want to uh, visualize to to modify. So for this, um, I will insert it in the flow that we have here. I just drag uh, the probe out a bit on the right and put the right panel just above. Um, we want to have variables in this right panel. So to populate the, the right panel, we will use the variables in my va variable list. So in the node my vari variables. So we will put a link between 
the two nodes. For this, uh, we put the mouse uh, either at the the entry of the right panel of the output of the my variables. When the node is uh, orange, we click on the mouse. We keep the mouse button and we drag a link to the output of the variable list. And we release uh, the button of the mouse when the, the other uh, extremity is orange. So now each time we will click on the start button, the variable list from this node will be copied to the right panel and we will so we we will populate the right panel this way and if we want to uh, modify the value of a variable in the right panel we must send a message to the stlink probe so for this we do the same we uh, put a link between the right panel and the probe out node so i save go back to the dashboard and now if when i start the acquisition i see the basic counter in the right panel so we see on the curve that it is at something the value is 10000 and something uh, if i write a zero in the basic counter so i write zero and click on the right button then the counter comes down to uh, to zero and the scale of the chart will be resized automatically. So I can put the counter back to zero. I can put it to 100, for example. And then I'm able to modify uh, the, the value of the variable in the MCU memory. As I told you, you can access to, to all the MCU address space of the MCU. So especially to um, registers. And uh, I will show you how to do this because for registers, we just have addresses. We don't have a name. So we can't extract the different information we need, the type and of course a name we can't and the address. We can't extract this from the ELF uh, file, from the executable file. I will uh, use the example of GPIOC because GPIOC is connected to the LEDs and we see uh, this is an extract of the schematic of the bone and uh, we see that the two LEDs are connected to the GPIO, uh, GPIOC pin uh, 2 and 3. So 2 it's the red LED and 3 the green LED. And the other information we get on this schematic is that uh, as we have three volts here, uh, we to have the LED on, we need to put a zero on the GPIO, on the corresponding GPIO pin. So we need the address of this GPIO. So we find this in the release manual. So here um, in the table, in this table, we see that it's 0x58020800. Uh, and we will um, access to the output data register, which is at offset uh, 14. So the final address, uh, the, the address that uh, in which we are interested is 0x58020814. And as we are um, interested only in uh, bit uh, 3 and 2, we will uh, consider only the lowest uh, byte of this register. So the type will be uh, unsigned 8-bit and the address is uh, this one. So if I come back to the monitor, I go again to my variables uh, node and here, as I don't have it in the the executable file, I can add this uh, address using this add custom variable. So here we can choose the type, but inside unsigned 8-bit is uh, what we need, so we don't change it. The address is 0, uh, 58020814. Uh, and I've forgotten to put 
x uh, yes uh, like this 0 x 5 8 0 2 0 8 14 in hexadecimal and the name here is mandatory of course because the software uh, needs a name so it's mandatory to give a name and it will be easier also for us to uh, to know what is uh, this address. So uh, we can call it GPIOCODR. And that's it. We can click on done, uh, deploy to save, and we go back to the dashboard. And when I start the acquisition, now I see that I have this GPIOCODR uh, register. Uh, here we see that. Um, the basic counter that is now in orange is somewhere around 700 and so the 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 values of the the odr register is very um small so we can click on the basic counter and we better see uh the size of the the scale of the chart has been uh, resized uh, but the basic counter is still uh, sequentially read from the from the MCU memory. Um, if I click again on it, we have it again. And if I hide it, it's just hidden on the chart. In fact, if I uh, put a zero in the basic counter, right, I show it again, and we see that it has uh, changed to zero. So it's just a way to um, when the values are very different to remove or when we have too many uh, values on the chart to remove to hide some values to observe better uh, the value uh, that we are interested at a certain uh, time if i come back to the slide so we see on the two first lines of the table when the red lead is off we have the green LED uh, toggling on off. So the red LED is on the bit uh, two. So when it's off, it's one. The bit three is zero and one. So uh, the, the ODR register value toggles between four and uh, 12 with the four, which is the offset due to the bit two of the red LED. And on the two other lines when the red LED is on. This time uh, the ODR register is toggling between 0 and 8. So at the moment we see that uh, the red LED is off and the ODR register is toggling between 4 and 12. Now I can modify the ODR um, value. So I can put either 0 or 8. Here I will put uh, 0. Zero, right. So we see now that the ODR register is toggling between zero and eight. And if you look uh, at your board, you see that the red LED is on now. So if I put again um, four in the ODR register, then I will put a one on the on the bit two of the GPIOC. Uh, I can write it in decimal or in uh, hexadecimal like this. Write, and it's not a good value. No, it's four. <laughs> four, so it's zero four. Write, and again the ODR register is toggling between four and twelve. So you can write it uh, in decimal or in hexadecimal here, except that uh, 0x4 uh, doesn't work. You must write 0x04. OK, so up to now, what we have seen is how to configure the flow. So how to, to connect the MCU, uh, the, the monitor to the MCU board through the ST-Link. So you that's what you have done during the homework and how to get the 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 viable informations 
the names, the address, the type from the executable file. And so how to read and write uh, using viable names or using address. So how to access to the STM32 uh, memory. And how to easily add a widget to the dashboard to customize the dashboard by a simple drag and drag and drop um, uh, by a simple drag and drop and insert this uh, widget in the floor. And now we will import the floor that will be used in the next hands on. I come back to the cube monitor and to import this. Um, this new floor, I use the menu at the top right of the cube monitor, the three lines. And in the menu, we have the import. And in the import um, pop up window, we click on the select a file to import. And here, okay, I already have the uh, Window Explorer uh, opening at the right place. So it's in C column again STM32H7 echo uh, WS, and this time it's in the STM32 cube monitor uh, directory. And here you have this JSON file. So you click on it, open, and import. And here we see a new tab. If we click on it, we have this nice uh, flow here. So at first glance, it seems much more complex because there is much more links and nodes. But in fact, um, uh, we find the same uh, structure than we had before. Uh, we, we, you can recognize here at the top the path the transmission path from the PC to the Estelink probe, and at the bottom, the reception path from the Estelink probe to the PC. So the difference is that there is more uh, widgets, uh, widgets uh, globally on the, on the dashboard. So if we uh, look at the transmission path first, you recognize the start and stop button, the right panel, uh, the Estelink probe, and the difference here is that there is uh, three viable lists instead of just one. So the, the reason of this is first uh, that I just wanted one viable in the right panel instead of all the viable in the, in the, in the viable list. So to isolate only one viable, I put it in, uh, in one separate uh, viable list. Uh, it could be two viables also, uh, but not all the viables in the right panel. So the viables that will appear in the right panel are isolated in one viable list. The second reason is that uh, they don't have the uh, same frequency of acquisition. So the fast hack uh, node uh, uses this sequential loop uh, sampling frequency which is the fastest possible for, for the cube monitor. And the other uh, nodes uses uh, another sampling frequency. Here, I've chosen 10 Hertz. So the, the acquisition is made um, less uh, frequently. And the other difference is that we have those uh, switches here. Those switches allow to write to some variable uh, just uh, two values. In fact, one for the one for the position on and one for the position off of the switch. But in the end, uh, with this uh, floor, we uh, the message sent to the ST link probe is exactly the same than the one sent by the right panel. That is right at this address, this value, and that's all. Not more complicated. On the reception path, uh, we find again those three uh, viable lists. Each is paired with the corresponding uh, node from the transmission path. There, inherit the. Can show you, for example, in the fast act variable, we have. Oh, it's not the most interesting. 
Yes, in this we have three variables, for example. If I click on the same uh, processing uh, node, I find again these three uh, variables that are inherited from uh, the other node. We have the widgets on, so you can recognize the clear chart uh, button and the chart and the chart. But we have some other widgets like uh, text to display uh, values as text. So function calls per value. We have another one here, perf percent. We have a gauge and we have three LEDs. And in between, in fact, uh, except the clear chart uh, button, these nodes allow to uh, select which variable will be displayed on which uh, widget. For example, here um, we have one variable for each uh, LED, but for the percent, for the perf percent, we, uh, this uh, variable is displayed on two different widgets. And we can have one variable displayed on, um, or several variables displayed on one widget, uh, etc. So that's only to select which variable is displayed on which widget. And that's all. It's not more complicated than this. So now to start this uh, dashboard, we just have to uh, select the ST link. So we double click on one of the probe node and we click on the smaller row and we find our ST link here. We select it and we click on done and we do the same for the other probe node, we find our ST link uh, identified by the serial number and we deploy and we can go to the dashboard. I resize the window and that's it. So we find, click on start acquisition, it will be uh, a bit more um, easier to understand it. So we find all our widgets, the start, stop, clear chart button, the chart, uh, the right uh, panel, and new widgets like the gauge, the text values, and uh, the switches and the LEDs. Uh, here, for example, if I modify uh, the, the the value, the variable in the right panel, I put, for example, 1,500. I click on right and I see that it's um, displayed uh, as text uh, just below. And the same for the perf value that I find in text and the value in the chart that I find in CPU cycles per function here. When I click on uh, a switch, I see the chart value is changing, the, the gauge uh, value is changing, the values in, in text here have changed as well, the LED has been as a uh, red uh, color, uh, simulating a red uh, on. Uh, so, for the moment, and yeah, that's okay. So for the moment, you, we don't, um, the value displayed here is, has no meaning. Uh, each time I click on this uh, switch on off uh, cache, uh, I just add or subtract 50%. Each time I click on the switch in the middle, I just uh, subtract or add 5%. And for the LCD display, 20%, but it has no meaning. Just on the on the discovery board, we have just a simulation uh, firmware that I've used to develop this um, this uh, dashboard. The other thing I can show you here is we have just one uh, group of um, widget, but we have this time two um, two tabs in our uh, dashboard and we can go back to the home dashboard. We still have it and we can still uh, start the acquisition and see uh, other, uh, uh, the, the ODR uh, register and the basic counter. So you see here that with two uh, tabs, you can, 
display different variables of your application or display the same variables in a different um, way. For example, you could have uh, variables in a table, for example. Um, okay, that, that's the way of using different flows for the same application. Just come back to the slides now. Okay, what I want to show you is uh, this. The variables displayed on this new dashboard are all put in a H7 demo structure. And you will be able to use this um, dashboard without uh, modifying. In fact, you, you will build new uh, applications in Next Amazon. So you will get new ELF uh, executable files, but you will use this dashboard without uh, modifying the, the ELF file. You won't modify anything in the dashboard because we have made it so that this structure is put at a fixed address at the 24 million. That is the beginning of the RAM, of the SRAM of, of the MCU. So you remember that the MCU uh, debug block, the ST-Link uh, uses addresses. So as the addresses won't have changed and the types won't have changed, you will be able to use the same ELF file to uh, visualize the behavior of your uh, new uh, firmware. Only the basic counter will be a problem because we don't know uh, what there is in those new firmware at this address. The, so it will not be a good idea to play with this basic counter because uh, the effect could be um, surprising. Um, so for this, I propose you uh, to, co to go back to the QMonitor application and here double click on the basic flow. So we have this uh, window opening here and we can either delete the basic flow but that's not what I want to do here. I want to show you that you can click on the enable button and then the basic flow will be disabled. Click on done, click on the deploy and we see that it's disconnected from the board and if we go back to the dashboard uh, the, the tab has disappeared. So here we won't be able to modify the basic counter anymore. So we won't have surprised during next hands-on. So at the moment, what we have done with the dashboard is that each time I've clicked on the switch, for example, on off cache. In fact, the cache is always off. I don't modify the, the cache uh, in the in this uh, in the current uh, firmware, I just uh, add or uh, subtract fifty percent to the perf percent value variable. So the perf displayed on the dashboard is uh, totally dummy. But during next hands on, uh, when you will uh, uh, click on the on off uh, switch, you will the firmware will. Uh, actually enable or disable the cache and uh, return the status. So the status is displayed on the LED and the perf value will be the consequence of this action. So the dashboard will have a real uh, signification, the, the values are displayed on the dashboard. And that's it for this uh, answer. So just in conclusion, some words. Uh, we have seen that uh, the cube monitor is, is used on a running application and is non-intrusive to this application. Of course, as much as uh, the MCU debug blog and the SWD uh, or GTAG protocol are non-intrusive. And we have seen that it's quite easy to customize the dashboard, uh, to configure the flow, to access to the STM32 memory in read or write. Of course, you won't be able to write to the flash memory, but you are able, for example, to read some, ad some address in the flash memory or some variable and some address and to add a widget uh, by simple drag and drops. And so now you are 
ready to to design your own dashboard of course you will start with a, a simple dashboard at the beginning and do it um, uh, a bit more uh, complex um, after this uh, and the example will help you uh, to to uh, in the first steps of uh, your um, customization of your design. Um, so for uh, for next hands-on, you will have to uh, stop uh, the Q monitor because uh, the um, for the moment we can connect only one tool. So either the Cube ID for the debug connection or the Q monitor. And then when you will start again the Q monitor, it will connect automatically to the board. And some links. So I want to. Um, so the first link is the Q Monitor web page on st.com, uh, but you ha already have access uh, to this page. The two links I want to have to highlight is the STM 32 MCU wiki because we don't have um, documentation of the tool in shape of a PDF document. All the documentation is on this uh, STM 32 wiki here. And the second uh, interesting link is this uh, webinar about QMonitor. It's in especially interesting because there is another example uh, of uh, dashboard in this uh, webinar, and you will have another example of what you can do with the with the monitor. And finally, you can also um, have access to some help directly from the cube monitor from the menu and uh, help here and again a link to the wiki and a link to the ST community where you can find some um, discussion threads on cube monitor that can give you some more information on the on the tool and that's all uh, from for this answer